Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we will try to play uh, a little bit with uh, real airplane trajectories. Uh, and it means that uh, we will work with uh, uh, data uh, which can be obtained uh, under the ADSB, uh, which means automatic dependent surveillance broadcast. If you remember, uh, we are very glad that we have ADSB technology today because it uh, uh, it make possible to use a simple software defined radio to receive uh, real um, position reports from real airplanes. Thus, uh, today we do not play with software defined radio, thus we use uh, data from open um, source um, databases uh, which uh, grab uh, the data from different software defined radios and provide uh, data processing and uh, at the end uh, we can get uh, access for uh, real uh, airplane trajectory. Thus uh, we will grab uh, airplane trajectory from uh, free source uh, database and then uh, import uh, this uh, data to MATLAB tool and inside of MATLAB environment we will try to uh, calculate uh, some parameters of this trajectory. First of all, if you remember, uh, ADSB provide us uh, non-synchronized data. It means that uh, ADSB data includes uh, multiple gaps. Thus, first of all, we need to uh, fill in the gaps in our uh, set of data. Thus, uh, we apply uh, interpolation uh, functions uh, to fill in the gaps in our data. Then, um, with the help of full uh, set of data, uh, we try to count uh, velocity of aircraft and heading, and of course vertical speed. Thus, three of these parameters are quite important for air traffic control. Uh, after that, uh, we will play a little bit with different visualization. Thus. Uh, I'm going to present uh, you how we can visualize geo, uh, geo data inside of MATLAB with the help of mapping toolbox. Uh, and uh, also we play with coordinates transformation. It means that uh, we represent it in latitude, longitude, uh, we represent it in uh, ECF and in local reference frame. And uh, finally, we built a few graphs uh, about uh, altitude of aircraft uh, in uh, uh, feet, in meters, and in other parameters. Thus, uh, let's start. And uh, first of all, uh, let, let grab some free data of ADSB. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, let's try to find uh, access for web, uh, web service, which provides us access for uh, free ADSB data. As you know, there are plenty of uh, different companies that can provide us such kind of access. However, I prefer to use uh, flight aware.com because uh, now it is one of the uh, resources which can give us free access for such kind of data. Thus uh, we need just to scroll down a little bit and then we will see real worldwide flight traffic and from this uh, mass of airplanes uh, I just would like to grab one of uh, one of flight. Okay, for example, it will be this one. Uh, 
Okay, and uh, what I've got? Okay, I've got um, flight SDR 3578 uh, with, with connection Dresden to uh, Canaria, Spain. Uh, however, uh, for data processing, uh, we need uh, data uh, for the whole flight. And uh, when we catch some trajectory from first page, we've got like actual flight. That's why we, we, uh, we need to scroll down a little bit and find uh, the uh, total uh, flight of uh, this aircraft. However, for this flight, uh, we do not have other uh, historical flights. That's why uh, I will prepare to choose some another uh, another flights. That's why I will come back to the schedule of uh, this uh, connection. And for example, let's try to uh, to choose, for example. Uh, CLH 2131 and uh, what we have here okay here we've got some past flights that's why we need to scroll down to find uh, past flights and uh, here we can just uh, click on some of these flights and we've got some data about these flights. That, that's why it is Dresden to Munich, Germany uh, flight connection and it is uh, Lufthansa uh, CLH 2131. Uh, what I am looking for, we are looking for raw data of this trajectory. Of course we can see the flight path, uh, we can find here uh, vertical profile with the uh, speed of aircraft. Uh, however, we need to get a track log. That's why view track log we need to click here. And uh, at this page we've got uh, the table like this one. And next uh, what we need, we just need to transform uh, this table data to the uh, workspace of our MATLAB. And then we can use uh, particular uh, variables like time, latitude, longitude and altitude to perform uh, data processing. Thus, first of all, we need to uh, move uh, this data uh, to the uh, MATLAB environment. Uh, okay, thus this is the way how we can uh, import uh, data to MATLAB uh, from this web page. It just uh, copy this table, Control C, and then go to MATLAB. Okay, I've got desktop version of MATLAB. Thus, uh, I just uh, launch MATLAB and then go to workspace okay you see here workspace then make uh, this window active and then press ctrl v and then uh, we need to wait uh, a few seconds and uh, a special wizard of um, data import uh, will be launched and uh, what we uh, have here. This is the middle step in which we need to specify in which uh, variables our input data will be imported. That's why we need to specify a uh, title for variables. The first let it be just uh, t or time. Okay, let it be just t. Uh, then uh, next uh, column is latitude. Uh, thus I create variable just let. Uh, 
uh, then uh, next variable it will be long and also we need uh, altitude altitude uh, it is column with uh, some values in feet uh, that's why uh, here it will be altitude uh, with uh, thousands of feet okay uh, next uh, we will see that uh, Altitude it is numbers and here's the blue colored thus uh, everything is uh, okay that's why we can we can just import uh, this variable however with uh, um, time we usually have uh, some difficulties because uh, by default it was uh, recognized as a text data thus we need to change text data to data time properties and uh, of course here we do not have data format which we need uh, that's why we need to enter a custom uh, data format for data time uh, variable uh, what does it mean it means that here we need to specify special mask by which uh, we read this data and uh, get correctly uh, available data time uh, first of all here you can see uh, first three letters it is uh, day of the week in matlab in mask uh, this parameter uh, we uh, specify with the help of triple e uh, then we uh, put a space because we have a space then uh, we need to specify double H. It will be uh, hours with uh, zero. Then uh, two dots. Uh, then uh, minutes also with uh, zero digit. That's why we use uh, lower case. Then also some uh, separation. Then seconds also seconds uh, we put as a small uh, double s because uh, there are zero in seconds then a space and then uh, we need to specify a uh, 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 part of uh, this time and am or pm in matlab we need to use just a delimiter that's why uh, it, it will be AM or PM, or maybe it's just uh, 2A. Oh, oh no, let's try 1A. And then uh, we just can uh, click enter, and you will see that it was uh, uh, red, red uh, and our data time uh, has been recognized correctly. Then we can uh, just uh, mark variables which we need to import. Thus, it will be time t, latitude, let, longitude, long, and altitude. And then we need just click import. And by clicking import, uh, we will see that four variables has been imported to uh, MATLAB workspace. T, let long altitude if we then close import wizard you will see that in uh, our workspace we have three these variables next uh, i uh, recommend to save uh, workspace as a, a data file to do that we also can just click uh, right bottom and then go to save control s and then we just need to specify a title for this uh, uh, for this uh, data file and in my case uh, it will be clh2131 clh2131 uh, and then i click save and in my uh, workspace in my current folder uh, a file clh2131 
dot mat uh, has been created. And then uh, I can use uh, this file for reading this data each time when I run my software in MATLAB. And uh, this is uh, very useful because you do not need to uh, migrate uh, data again. That's why you done it one time, then save it at specific uh, data file and then load this data in MATLAB environment uh, when you will need it. Okay, uh, next uh, uh, we can open uh, editor in MATLAB and then we can try to work with uh, this data. And uh, I don't want to uh, I don't want to uh, quote with you uh, because this code I can share with you. That's why uh, I just uh, go to my we website astrumov.styre.com then you can go to quotes uh, then go to uh, trajectory data processing folder and here is a uh, uh, visualization of airplane trajectory based on ADSB data messages that's why we will click here and uh, here we've got uh, just a second, I will change, um, uh, okay, I, I will zoom it a little bit for you. And here we've got a function uh, which we will use for uh, airplane trajectory data processing. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to tell you that there are two types of uh, software. First type of software is just code in which you just need to change input data and uh, you've got everything that you need. Uh, another option is using a function uh, which is the easiest one. If you scroll to the end of this page, uh, you will see that here you can download uh, aircraft trajectory function. Okay. Uh, it will be open, thus I just copy and then uh, paste in my uh, new file. Thus, okay. Control C, Control Paste and uh, Save. Okay. And in this case, you can just copy this small part of code and then paste it in your uh, in your script or in common window. Uh, however, here you just need to change. Uh, title of file which you would like to use. In my case it is CLH2131. Uh, thus with the help of load function uh, we will uh, upload uh, our pre-saved uh, data to the MATLAB workspace and then we will use it. Uh, however next we need to change to change altitude from feet to meters because by default uh, at website it is uh, in feet uh, thus we just multiply it with uh, point 40, uh, 40 uh, to get transformation from feet to meters. Uh, due to uh, needs of visualization we need to specify uh, uh, departure and destination airport. And in my case, it is this DDDS, EDDS, okay, and EDDM. Uh, and that's all that you need. Also, please check uh, T, it is data time T, uh, latitude it is latitude in degrees, longitude it is longitude in degrees altitude in meters. You remember that we transform 
uh, altitude from feet to meters and matrix of departure and destination airports. Then if you run it, run Let's see what we will have. Uh, then we can switch to the uh, command window to see uh, results. Okay. Uh, I've got first figure. Thus, this function will uh, create a first figure, and it will be airplane pass. Uh, you can see uh, departure and destination airport, and the pass of this trajectory. It means that we look on the trajectory. Uh, from the space and what we have uh, at the ellipsoidal model uh, is represented here. Uh, next graph that we have in this visualization function it is uh, distribution of altitude. In air navigation we call this graph vertical profile or means uh, vertical plane. Of this trajectory. Uh, here we've, we've got uh, data time in ET. Okay, this is uh, um, uh, universal time here and uh, barometrical altitude in meter. As you remember, uh, mostly in uh, ADSB we've got barometrical altitude. That's why it is not like geometrical altitude and there is no connection with ellipsoidal model. That's why it is barometrical altitude which is count, uh, counted from uh, some isobaric level. Uh, next graph, third graph, just a second, try to find it, okay, third graph. It is result of interpolation because uh, in our trajectory may be some gaps, uh, especially if we uh, talk uh, about uh, global flight, for, for example, from Asia to America, uh, which uh, requires to fly over the ocean territory. Uh, some part of uh, Earth can be uncovered with ADSB ground network services, and that's why there are and there are a lot of gaps in data. That's why we need to interpolate this data be be before we will process uh, uh, next uh, next parameters. That's why. Um, uh, in this case, uh, gaps can be seen very well if it is uh, global flight, uh, for example, cross-continental uh, flights. Uh, however, uh, if it is like small trajectory for flight not more than one hour, we also can find gaps. You will see, for example, at these points, we, we have a different frequency of distribution of this data. That's why, in any case, uh, this uh, function, a traffic trajectory, use spline interpolation uh, for uh, uh, for interpolate data for a unique time. And uh, fourth graph is a vertical profile with interpolated data. Therefore, here I've got specified a specific legend where we can see star, green star here is a measured data and there just a dotted line, it is result of interpolation. Therefore, here you can see 
uh, green stars, which uh, are distributed uh, with different frequency, and uh, interpolated data. If you, if you would like, you can just uh, zoom uh, some uh, piece of data and you will see that there are multiple gaps in data and uh, interpolation um, is required here to fill in the gaps. Thus, uh, fourth graph, uh, it is result of uh, vertical profile interpolation. Uh, going next and uh, next one, second. It is fifth graph. It is uh, a graph of interpolation of data. Uh, in latitude and longitude. That's why uh, by y-axis here it is uh, value in degrees for uh, latitude and longitude. It's just a representation of uh, interpolation process. Uh, therefore, it was fifth. Uh, sixth graph. It is representation is uh, in uh, north east up reference frame. In this case, uh, I will use uh, departure airport as a reference point for uh, now reference frame. Now it is local reference frame uh, located at the ellipsoidal surface and uh, in this reference frame, we can uh, see like real 3D trajectory of airplane in a Cartesian reference frame. Uh, let's go next. Uh, seventh, it's just representation uh, horizontal path of aircraft in in now reference frame. Thus, here is x directed to the north in kilometers, uh, y uh, is directed to the east. And EDDM, it is a reference point for uh, now reference frame. And here we can see a flight path in horizontal uh, plane. Also quite important that uh, from this graph you can estimate uh, flight lengths uh, in kilometers because uh, scales in kilometers that's why you can probably estimate that approximately 30 kilometers uh, lengths of uh, this trajectory. Uh, Just a second, and um, next graph it is distribution of velocity. Okay, uh, at the left side we have velocity in meters per second per second, uh, and uh, right side is representation for vertical velocity estimated uh, based on uh, barometrical altitude. That's why green one it is. Uh, absolute value of uh, barometrical velocity or vertical velocity of aircraft. Uh, the red, red one and the blue one, it is uh, velocity of uh, aircraft. The difference that one of them is ground uh, and next one is like real vector of velocity here. Uh, next graph, ninth, it is airplane heading in degrees, that's why 
here is degrees and here is a time scale and uh, is uh, represent result of even uh, changing also quite important that uh, by this graph we can uh, see how airplane after pilot switch from one heading direction to another one that's why just uh, just one then we can see dynamic of aircraft then we've got another and then some dynamic dynamic of aircraft and then we've got constant heading fly and then we changed uh, change our heading from uh, one side to another uh, direction and also we can see some dynamic of aircraft that's why it is quite informative uh, graph which uh, give us information about uh, switching of direction during the whole flight trajectory and and that's all nine these graphs is a result of uh, airplane trajectory data processing with uh, this uh, function. Uh, if you come back to the command window, uh, you will see that uh, this function give us also three calculated parameters. The first one it is uh, total trajectory length. It means that uh, software count uh, distance between each point in our trajectory and then just getting a sum of this uh, uh, pieces of trajectory. And we've got like a uh, total length of our flight trajectory. And it is uh, 366 kilometers. And uh, this is a, another uh, flight path. It means uh, length of uh, airplane trajectory, however, only in horizontal plane. That's why we just count at the net, at the now reference frame, uh, distances between points and then count total distance. And uh, third parameter is a total flight time. And you can see that 39 minutes and 26 uh, seconds uh, this flight took place. Uh, that's why this is the first uh, option how you can run this code. That's why uh, first of all you can just uh, get a function aircraft trajectory and then put arguments of this function and you've got uh, your results. Another options it is just applying uh, the whole function. To do that, I need just to come back a little bit. Okay, this one. And uh, to do that, I just need to scroll up and get a download function. So if I just need to click it here and uh, uh, control a select all and control c copy all and then come back to editor then we need to create new script and put all of this inside of this script then scroll up a little bit and then change uh, title for our file to clh2131 mat oh sorry and then uh, also we need to change airports if I remember our airports was okay I just can copy from my previous code uh, and just put it here okay then we need to save this file let it be ADSB2 uh, then save and run uh, the difference 
between these corps only in running this code. That's why in this case uh, here we've got code and in another case this code uh, is packed inside of function. That's why uh, if you would like to work with code and if you would like to see variables inside, that's why uh, uh, this, uh, ne this option is uh, useful for you. And uh, finally, uh, you will have uh, the same graphs that you get previously. Okay, just a second. Just a second. Just a second. Okay. That's why all nine figures you will have. That's why it's up to you which way you prefer to get uh, results. Uh, and uh, maybe next uh, also I would like to show you that uh, after running this code in current folder of your software a folder with the corresponding title uh, will be generated. Uh, that's why you see EDDC to EDDM. And inside of this folder you will get everything saved. It means uh, figures in fig format, in fig extension, and figures in JPEG extension with corresponding title. And uh, data all uh, workspace uh, saved in a uh, data file of MATLAB. Also here. That's why what we have inside of this code. First of all, uh, we will uh, create a folder variable in which we uh, put title and pass for uh, saving uh, these figures. If uh, this folder exists, uh, exist, we just uh, use it and uh, save the data inside of this folder. If not, we create this folder. Thus, we run make dir function. Uh, next, uh, I, uh, we will rec uh, recalculate time from data time to time in seconds from uh, takeoff of aircraft. Thus, time variable here it is uh, time in seconds from takeoff up to the landing. Uh, then uh, we uh, use uh, in interp1 to interpolate the data for uh, variables time 1. That's why time 1 it is uh, interpolation for 1 second. That's why uh, here I use linspace function to create a variable from uh, which is changed from zero to maximum value in matrix time. And I use uh, number of these variables as a maximum number of uh, variable time. That's why next I just interpolate latitude, longitude and altitude for each second of uh, our data. Uh, then uh, we specify uh, periods for latitude and for longitude, like minimum and maximum values. And then with the help of mapping toolbox, I use GeoShow function to plot a first graph. That's why it will be uh, like uh, latitude, longitude, frame and we will see a airplane trajectory with uh, setting up uh, titles of airports. Uh, then uh, I use save fig to save figure and save as function to save as a JPEG file in folder which we created. Uh, then uh, we plot a vertical profile uh, that's why just T from altitude. 
then uh, it was airplane pass therefore also use uh, geo show function uh, however in this case we use uh, latitude and longitude and interpolated data that's latitude longitude it's a measured data and latitude longitude uh, are interpolated data uh, then do the same for vertical profile that's why time altitude is uh, unmeasured data and time one and altitude like the whole variable is a uh, interpolated data uh, result of interpolation as a plot uh, thus time latitude measured time one latitude are interpolated then time long are measured and time one longitude interpolated by spline functions uh, then uh, we transform our data to ecf uh, uh, to perform a visualization in net reference frame that's why first of all we use llr to ecf uh, also in MATLAB, uh, we can use a function geodavic to uh, ECF. Uh, thus, it uh, depends on you which uh, function uh, you would like to use. However, in this case, also geodavic to ECF uh, is possible. Ho however, you can use um, a function created by yourself because uh, these formulas for transformation is not so complicated. And finally, we've got X, Y, and Z uh, from the center of our planet. And uh, after that, we can transform our Cartesian data to the local reference frame, which is uh, touched down to our planet. And uh, in particular, this case, we use a function ECF to net to convert from... Uh, ECF to north east down and we've got X Y and Z data and then we just uh, plot this data and uh, because it is north net uh, where Z directed to the down that's why we just need to add minus sign here to get uh, direction changed from down to up that's why we apply minus here to get transformation to now, north, east, up. And uh, plot3 function we use uh, to get uh, this Cartesian visualization. And the same for horizontal plot pass. In this case, we need require only plot, plot function. Then uh, we need to estimate velocity and uh, heading of aircraft. Uh, velocity estimation is also quite easily. What we need, we just need to count uh, flight paths between each point of our trajectory. And uh, then divide it by uh, time uh, which uh, we take. And we've got velocity. That's why velocity horizontal velocity 3d and uh, changes in uh, vertical speed uh, hidden angle calculated uh, with the help of uh, constraints in rec rectangular triangle that's why I use just uh, tangent to get uh, values and uh, also we need to take uh, attention into the part of our reference frame that's why for different part we need to apply uh, a, li a little bit different formulas because it depends on uh, tangent uh, function geometry okay and finally we've got velocity uh, we've got uh, vertical velocity and uh, horizontal velocity uh, that's why we divide pass into corresponded time 
and uh, then we build a velocity graph with the help of plot function and a specification of axis left and axis right because different type of velocity and level of these velocities are different that's why uh, using uh, two scales are welcome in this case and finally uh, we just uh, plot airplane hidden angle that's why plot uh, time and hidden angle and displaying uh, values of uh, total trajectory lens, lens total uh, path lens and total flight and in this case we use function between which uh, help us to catch difference in two data time uh, values that's why we just use difference between the first data time timestamp and uh, the final one and uh, then we need to transform from cell to string to get uh, displayed uh, in a total window. And finally, we save uh, our workspace in a specific data file. That's why, uh, with the help of this uh, one function, with the two options of running of them, you can get uh, calculation of real airplane trajectory. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for watching. See you later. Bye.